All right, guys, welcome back to the shack. Tonight, I'm going to be going over a machine that brings something to the table that I'm not used to seeing a whole lot of out of most of the machines that the company send to me. Uh, this machine was sent to me by Sculpt Fun, and tonight we're going to be going over the Sculpt Fun S30. And this is the S30 Ultra 22 watt. Now, this machine does come in several variations with different wattage and outputs. The highest output you can get is the 33. Uh, that's not the machine that I have. This is the 22, but it's pretty impressive. The one thing that I will say that they did and they did right is they have increased the work area over what you typically will see in a machine. So we're going to get to kind of walk you through the setup process and how this machine goes together. I had a friend come over and help me out with that. So some of you may see Klein in the video, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through the setup process and how you put it together. Uh, the instructions are pretty well placed. Everything's bagged with numbers. Makes it kind of simple. So if you want to see the biggest out of the box machine that I've opened in this shop in quite some time now, stick around and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so right out of the gate here, we're going to be getting this thing out of the box. And you can see it's a pretty hefty size box. Uh, all the parts are kind of supersized because this is a 600 by 600 working area machine. Uh, everything is going to be pretty standard. You're going to have the gantry. You're going to have the two side pieces, the front and the back piece. Uh, this machine has corner brackets. They kind of hold all that together so that uh, those act as the feet as well. So it's a really simple design. Uh, similar to a lot of other machines on the market and we're just getting all the parts laid out here Making sure we've got everything getting ourselves oriented to where everything goes and uh, Gonna get start putting it out uh, as you can see the instruction books got some nice little pictures in there uh, Each one of those bags is numbered so that you know which bag to use for what step All right guys, so start off with pay attention and the shorter piece goes on the front of the machine where the control panel goes the longer piece goes to the left, and those are going to be the two that have the uh, increments uh, kind of marked on them. So that'll 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 help you save you a little trouble because it is a little confusing at first. Uh, the illustration really doesn't represent the shape of the machine, so pay attention to the fact that the shorter one is going to be the one closest to you on the front of the machine. Uh, there's several screws that go into these corners to hold them together. Once you do that, slide the gantry on there through the wheels. It slides in relatively easy. There will probably be some adjustment needed to be done later, uh, but to get the machine together, it's not necessary to do it at this point. Once you put the front left corner uh, leg on and the controller, basically the frame is complete, guys. Uh, it's that quick. I mean, the frame putting the frame together is really easy. Uh, now we're putting those belts in there. Those can be a little challenging. You may need some tweezers or a little screwdriver if you're kind of inexperienced at it. Uh, you know, Klein taking Klein's taking a little longer than I did on mine. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> tools may make it easier. Uh, once you do that, you've got the little locking screws that go in to hold the belt in place. Uh, I like to secure the front and kind of set the amount of belt that's sticking out at the front and then pull them tight from the rear. Uh, that's just personal preference, but if I'm going to have excess belt hanging off of the machine, I'd rather it be around back where I've got to have got to look at it. Uh, you can trim those belts, but I just generally don't in case I ever need to borrow a belt from one machine and give to another. Uh, they're in their full length. You've got to put the bracket on there. This is the one part of the machine that I'm not crazy about is there's four screws. It holds the Z axis. It seems a little, a little too uh, cumbersome in my opinion for the Z axis adjustment, but maybe there'll be an aftermarket uh, piece coming in later that you can replace that with. Next is pretty much just the cabling. We had a little confusion at first. Uh, of the wire for the limit switch got pulled to the back but eventually we figured that out. Uh, cable management on the machine is not terrible. Uh, the wires are kind of exposed, but they do a pretty good job of getting these little brackets that go on the back of the gantry. And uh, they actually screw into the gantry and work pretty well as far as holding those wires out of the way. Uh, you're gonna wanna train the wires and kind of bend them to where it's kind of natural for them. Then uh, lots of zip ties. I'm just using the ones that came with the, uh, the build here. Uh, you do also have to put the limit switches on. That's the limit switch that goes on the gantry. And there's another one that goes over here in the left corner near the home location. 
Uh, I did find that the furthermost screw hole is the one that is required uh, for the screw to go in. There's actually three holes over there. And they had this neat little piece of trim down there that you can peel off, put the cable behind it, and put the trim back, and it holds that cable uh, securely up inside the rail out of the way. Uh, I thought that was really, a really nice touch. That made it a lot cleaner on the front. Uh, and then we went back, like I said, just making sure we got everything going through the book, <laughs> making sure nothing got missed. Uh, there is this little carriage on the front that you've got to put on there. And this is kind of a neat little thing that they've added to help keep up with that little focusing, you know, piece of metal that you have to have. Uh, putting the screw through there with the wrench, it's, it's a little bit of a trick, but it does demonstrate it in the book how it goes in there. Uh, and that holds that little, uh, little thing for you that you use for focusing. And other than that, guys, I mean, basically the setup is done at this point. The only real thing left to do is a little bit of cable management. Uh, there's that little short pigtail right there. That's for the air assist. Uh, this machine does come equipped with automatic air assist, which is pretty handy. Uh, other than the Z-axis adjustment, guys, I mean, I, I'm really good with the whole build. Uh, no major issues. Uh, cable management, like I said, I think this machine would be a good candidate if you put it in an enclosure for a... Uh, a little bit of a chain to go down through there, drag chain for your hoses and stuff, I think would make it look a lot cleaner. But if you're going to be using it portable, that might not be something you want to do. Uh, but if you're putting it in an enclosure, I definitely would look into putting, you know, maybe like a 24-inch drag chain on there to uh, allow you some, uh, some little better cable management on that right side. All in all, guys, I'm going to be honest, the, the build wasn't that bad. Like I said, you saw the majority of the machine was put together out of the box. Uh, total time was probably about 30 minutes, and that's literally with us just goofing off, having fun, putting this thing together. All right, guys, like I've said, we're going to do some power testing with this machine. But first, I want you to fully understand the size of this thing. This is a two-foot square, or a two-foot level, all right? This two-foot level will fit anywhere in this workspace. You've got more than adequate workspace compared to a lot of the other machines. Now, it doesn't come with all the bells and whistles that some of the other machines have, but you have got size, if nothing else. So if size is what you're looking for, this thing brings it to the table. So one of the few things that I want to kind of go over uh, before we do testing with the machine to kind of show you how it works that maybe didn't get explained well uh, in the assembly process is, first of all, my biggest complaint with the machine, Sculpt Fun, I, I like the majority of it, but my biggest complaint is that you have to have this tool to tighten and loosen the Z-axis and focus the machine. Now, you do use the little, you know, those cylinder blank. That's not a bad thing. They did, at least with this machine, unlike some of the others, they did give you a little place to put that guy so you don't lose it as easily. Uh, it has these two little brackets that you may see in the video. We put them on here. Uh, that's not a bad thing. Uh, you have a place to keep up with that. This is the only thing that I actually think Sculpt Fun kind of dropped the ball on. A big knob, uh, you know, a lever, something that doesn't require loosening and tightening and four screws would have been a welcomed addition to this machine. Now, that may be an aftermarket part that they offer later on as an upgrade. Not sure, but Sculpt Fun, do yourself a favor, man. Let's, let's fix that, <laughs> okay? Other than that, guys, the, a lot of the technology and a lot of the, 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 the materials for the build are very similar to others on the market. I will give them good marks for the fact that the lens is removable. This is basically just a shield. It's not, it doesn't fully encompass the machine because you have to place the uh, focusing apparatus under here. So it would kind of it would kind of be hard for them to do a fully encompassing shield. But the shield is easily removable with two thumb screws. I have the shield off, but I have the thumb screws in the module in the event that I do decide to put it back on. One thing that you will notice that is kind of ahead of the game with some of the other machines is that you have this linear rail system here as opposed to wheels. That does give this machine uh, as far as the head, and I'll try to get it where you can see it. It does give it a lot more rigidity up here, but you still got the wheels down below. So anything too intense, you know, you're still going to have to worry about adjusting the concentric wheels on here and making sure that's tight. These aren't exactly the way I would like them. 
Uh, I do need to do a little bit of adjustment probably, but I want to do my pre-adjustment testing before I do the adjustment. Uh, but all in all, the gantry is solid. The only place that you may notice a little bit of movement is going to be on those wheels, but you can adjust and get a lot of that out of there, and that's what we're going to be doing later on in the video. Uh, another thing to be careful with with this machine is the placement of the limit switch is kind of here on the top. Uh, I would advise you, if you have the capability, of, it might not be a bad idea to come up with some way of putting a little bit of a shield over this guy. Uh, with a with a three, it wouldn't be too hard to build a little bracket to go on here to kind of to kind of cover up and, and give a little bit of security to this to this limit switch, uh, because where that little switch is positioned and the way it's positioned, it wouldn't be too hard to see that you know something would catch that and break the little leg off the limit switch not really that big of a deal as long as you stay away from it if you have it in an enclosure where you're not leaning across this area that'd be great uh, the key for the main controller the good thing i like about it is you can put it in on position and get rid of the key if you don't need it if you do need it you can turn the machine off lock it out and take the key with you if that's what you desire uh, it has a rocker switch for power. Uh, some of the machines have the push button that you have to hold for a series of seconds. This is a lot less uh, confusing than that. I'll give them that. You do have the USB cable that goes up. They give you a right angle connector for the power, but the USB cable is still kind of sticking up there in, in the way. So if you may want to get you a right angle USB for that as well. Uh, and you could run these cables a little differently and maybe do some securing to keep them away from the power switch. Other than that, guys, the steppers, the timing linkage, the way that it works, uh, it does have limit switches. Everything else is kind of run of the mill. Uh, the only big standout is the fact that, yes, it does have a much, much larger work area. Even with the added size, uh, it seems very sturdy. Uh, the, the rails don't give a whole lot. You would have to really put some weight on there. Uh, far more than what this little module is going to exert to, to cause it to, to dip or swag. One of the big things that I have a little bit of problem with uh, is I don't have a honeycomb big enough. So with a 600 by 600 work area, it's hard to find a honeycomb to fit this thing. And I'm sure Skull Fun either has one or will have one. But uh, as long as your cut's not using the entire work area you should be good uh, it does come with air assist and guys this is a pretty unique pretty cool looking uh, <clears throat> air assist here uh, it does appear to be a twin cylinder compressor it has a good constant flow and the air assist is controlled in light burn which is a it's, it's a plus for me you can set your layers for different layers for the air assist to come on and go off but the way they've got this one set up is pretty pretty well thought out uh, there is a little pigtail here that connects to the power for the output to the air assist. And then once you do all your cable management and everything, it's kind of neat and tidy. Uh, no big issues with that. Uh, I do have cables laying here where I powered the machine down. But uh, once you, once you kind of put your cables out of the way, uh, it's, it's pretty clean. You've got most of the electronics, most of the... The cables and stuff are on the right side of the machine. I like that idea because when you're building your enclosure, you just allow yourself an extra, you know, eight to ten inches on this side, and you can actually house most of that equipment over here out of the way. Uh, there is a very long cord on the air assist pump. The hose really doesn't afford you to use the full length of the uh, cable that connects to the machine. But all in all, uh, it does have the Wi-Fi antenna over here kind of out of the way. That's a good thing. It doesn't get in the workspace. Uh, it has pretty good clearance as far as the Z-axis adjustment. It does come equipped with the air assist nozzle and everything already out of the box. Uh, cable management is pretty good. They actually give you some little straps that screw on back here. You may have saw in the assembly video that do a pretty good job of holding those cables and hoses. And for the most part, they've kept the cables to a minimum and everything is inside the sheath. So, uh, not, not, a, not a bad design at all, but uh, let's fire this thing up and get to do some testing. All right, guys, the world of lasers in the past year or so, since I've been really messing with them a lot, 
has came a long way. Folks keep innovating and trying to outperform others. And the one thing that I will say about the Sculpt Fun S30, this is the Ultra Series, and guys, the thing is massive. It's huge. I don't know that they could make an extension kit for it, but if they did, it would be ridiculously large. Uh, out of the box, this is by far the biggest as far as both the X and the Y. I've had some other machines that were longer, a little, a little longer, such as the Niji 3, and uh, of course my extended machines uh, that I've already extended, of course, they'll be longer than it, but they're not this wide. So. If size is what you're looking for, guys, if you if you want to do those really large projects, uh, especially engraving, then you may want to give this guy a look. If space is something that you don't have a lot of, this machine may not be for you unless you just got to have the big work bed. But it is huge. So if you if you want to have a plenty of workspace, then give this guy a look. Uh, power settings is consistent with most traditional 20 watt machines the air assist uh functions as is i didn't modify the air assist any uh, i was running their pump that comes with the machine uh you can see here even on the back it done a really good job now i'm getting a little bit of uh a little bit of blowback off the honeycomb and you can see that honeycomb pattern but that's because i don't have any spacers under the honeycomb i just got it laid on the table and so it's making that the fumes come back up. So that's not the fault of the air assist. That's the fact that I didn't put spacers under the honeycomb when I laid it on the table. Uh, power as far as engraving. Guys, I didn't have to modify the controller to get the gradient to work. That's, that's kind of a big deal to me because a lot of these machines, they advertise these extraordinary speeds. And then when you get them and you put them in light burn, you have to go in and tweak the settings to be able to utilize that speed. Well, I've gotten in a habit now of checking the machine's controller settings before I start doing my testing. And this one didn't require any, any tweaks or changes or anything like that. Uh, put it on a light burn. When I, when I connected it, I searched for the device. And you'll know when you find it because it'll come up, you know, GRBL 600 by 600. And there's not another machine in the shop that's that big. Uh, even, even the work area of my extended machines that I run... I mean, it's, it's, it's impressive for an out-of-the-box machine. Now, accuracy-wise, I, I did the circles the first time. I noticed a little bit of extra uh, variation in the circles. The squares were perfect, but there was a little bit of extra variation in the circles. So being that this machine, the only parts really that you're going to be able to adjust because the, the rollers on it really don't lend themselves to much adjustment. They don't have the, the nuts. Uh, you can tighten them and loosen them, but as far as adjusting from side to side, there's not a whole lot there to, to be done. But what I did find is, I think it's partially because of the long frame. Like some of the other machines I've tested recently, this machine likes really tight belts. So I went back, retensioned the belts, added a little more tension to them, reran the test, and I got a little more consistency out of it. Now, this is still well within anything that you'll be doing. At 100 millimeters a second, you're, you, you can expect a little bit of movement, uh, especially a brand new machine. Uh, some of the metal still not quite sliding the way that it will after it gets a little wear on it. But this is really good for an out of the box machine. Settings aren't that complicated. Uh, maintenance shouldn't be too terrible. The air assist cone with the air assist automatic air, that should, keep, that should keep everything clean and running smooth. Also, I did some photos with this machine, and this is just on quarter inch Luan. So you can't expect the best results. I have found that I get the best results on pictures using a real fine MDF. But I did the first one. I ran it a little hot. Now, I did touch this up with a sander because I ran air assist and, and all that. But I did the first one. Run it a little bit, a little bit hot, but it does have like a a raised 3D effect going on here. So that's pretty cool. I guess that would technically be like 2.5D. But anyway, it has a raised effect. So then I backed the power down a little bit and was like, let me go something a little more, a little smoother, a little less uh, destructive to the material. And that's what I got. And that's just a black and white photo from me back in 1984. And I know guys that I was rocking the vest, okay? So, Altogether, the machine performs really well. Uh, it does what it's advertised to do. 
Assembly's not terrible. It is a little cumbersome because the parts are a little bigger than what I'm used to. Uh, so having a friend help hold some of the stuff when you're trying to put it together, not necessarily a bad idea. Uh, but the only big thing that I think they messed up on with this machine, guys, and I'm sorry, Sculpt Fun, but I've got to be honest. I do not like having to have a tool and having to release four screws and then tighten them back with a tool to focus the machine. I, I can live with the little, the little cylinder. That's not that big of a thing. I prefer a flip down lever of some type, but I can live with this. But I think we need to improve upon the fastening of the module and lose this guy. Now, I will say this, if you're one of those folks that uses the same material for most of your jobs, which in most cases, if I'm doing a job, it will be consistently the same material as long as, as far as plywood goes. But if you're one of those folks that you're wanting this machine for mirrors or you're wanting this machine for material that's pretty much gonna be consistent, you won't have to spend a lot of time with the wrench and so that would probably be a good thing. Uh, but just be aware of that, guys. That's the only real negative that I have to say about the machine. Everything else works fine. Uh, they did add the key that you can remove uh, and take out if you don't want to use the key. But if you do want to lock the machine out, you can put the key in, turn the machine off, and uh, take the key with you, and nobody can run your laser while you're gone. So that's kind of cool. It has the e-stop button. Uh, it does have Wi-Fi antenna on it. I haven't played with that in Lightburn because I just prefer USB. I think it's always better uh, when you're running these machines to just use USB to eliminate any possible interference or any problems like that. But if you're one of those folks that want to use uh, Wi-Fi, it does have the capability of using Wi-Fi. Just not sure how it works with Lightburn. So you may want to do some research on that. But all in all, guys, good machine. The only other little thing that I'll ding them on is the placement of the limit switch with it being up top like that. I think that kind of lends it to be damaged. But a little bit of engineering and uh, maybe a 3D printer, you could put a cover over that thing to kind of protect it. But just be mindful of it if you get one of these that try to stay away from that left corner with anything, dragging cables or anything like that because you don't want to break that little metal uh, leg off of that limit switch. But for the money, for the work area that you get, the smoothness of it, not a bad machine. Uh, it, it's competitive with most any other 20 watt machine on the market as far as cutting ability, accuracy, image quality. I, I'd put it right up there with any of the rest of them on the market. Like I said, only big hang up is this guy. But anyway. All right guys, so there's my preliminary review of this machine. Like I said, I'm gonna take a break from doing testing today because it will not fit in my enclosure. So I'm having to vent it outside and it's hot. But uh, we'll, we'll try to do some more stuff with the machine. I've got a table engraved that I'm supposed to be doing for a local fire department. And depending on the size of the logo that they want, this guy might be the, the machine for the job because the workspace of this machine is bigger than any other machine that I have that's currently portable. So uh, we, may, we may tackle that job with this machine before too long. But like I said, guys, if you're interested in the machine, check out the links down below. Uh, I've got some links to the machine. There'll also be some discount codes there uh, if you are interested in getting one. But, uh, and those, like I said, those are affiliate links. They go to kind of help support the shack and help keep the lights on. So uh, if you do look at the machine, then feel free to use those links. But until next time, guys, be safe and have a good day.